Hey, you want to make an electric skateboard that goes 32 miles an hour for 30 miles? And you want to do it for really cheap? Cheaper than anything else on the market? Good, because I was going to show you anyway. I mean, you clicked on this video, come on. Right then, first thing you need, a deck. Clearly, get some wheels. Get the kit from DIY eBoards, this is 10S 5P. You could get a smaller one, but obviously your specs aren't going to be the same as far as range and battery life. And finally pick up some screws, because, I mean, you're going to need them. So here's the deck I've chosen. It's a no-name deck off of Amazon. It works fine. Here are the wheels that came with it. Here's the wheels that I actually bought. Clearly, they're bigger. First thing you want to do, I don't like logos. Let's get those logos right on off of there. Ah, that looks absolutely beautiful. Moving on. So the first box that comes from DIY board contains the charger. You knew that. Here's the wheels. There's some skate hardware that comes with it. The longer ones are nice. Some riser pads and the front trucks. Now, in addition to that, I also bought four extra lipped bearings, just in case, and some spare belts. You actually need them. One thing to note, the first box from DIY eBoards doesn't actually come with the battery, the battery housing, or the ESC, so you can't really test fit that onto the board. Which is, you can uh, see the lipped bearing. You also have the drive sprocket, which is kind of some cheap plastic. And we, uh, we've got the wheel that, um... yeah, there we go. Uh, actually, before we throw it away, Let's take a very careful look at how thin those are and how thick those are. And it doesn't fit, so we've got to trim these teeth down to be a little thinner and then it'll slot right in the back. While the wheel sprocket might be made of plastic, the one that comes on the motor is actually metal and has two set screws, which I thought was a nice touch. So what we're doing here is we've got a pair of calipers. On the top end is for measuring the inside diameter. The bottom end is for measuring the outside diameter. So what we want to do is measure the inside diameter of here. How much space do I have here for the teeth to fit in? All right, looks like we've got 12.47, 12 and a half ish. Now that was on the inside portion. If we don't move it, we know what the outside portion is. And if you draw it carefully, you'll scratch it. And that'll be your mark of how far in to cut. There we go. See those little grooves now? That's how much I have to shave off. Now for this project, I'm going to be using a Dremel. Here we have a normal Dremel and the cutoff bit. This is a metal cutoff bit, but it's going to work just fine. Remember, wear eye protection. Don't be an idiot. And once I realized I couldn't see anything, I got clear ones. It's not rocket science, just cut along the lines. By the way, this makes a ton of plastic shrapnel everywhere. Do it outside if you don't like cleaning up your house. And looks good. And now the moment of truth. Oh, that couldn't be more perfect. So we don't actually need the inside bearing since the lift bearing is taking all the weight. So go ahead and stick your screwdriver in, spin it around a bit, and what do you know, a bearing pops out. The spacer that comes with the DIY eboard is much longer. You want to use the long spacer when you install it. And then step three is draw the rest of the freaking owl. And uh, no, really, just do the same thing on the other side. And here we are mounting it up. I'm just putting two bolts in because, you know, testing purposes only. Three weeks later. All right, here's what you get. You get two foam pads, a remote that actually feels really good. Like, it's smooth, it's good. And uh, you get the battery and the case and the ESC. Let's see if it works. Look at that. You just uh, turn the remote on and turn the battery on and uh, look at that. I guess this one's got some rolling resistance. I'm not sure from what. Whatever it is, hopefully it uh, wears away. 
Yeah, initial impressions of the remote, very, very good. Next thing to tackle is how are we going to mount it a flat object to a curved board. Of course, we're going to use the foam that was supplied in the kit. First thing you want to do is make sure that it's pretty and centered. So here I am marking the center of the board and then the center of the foam pad, tracing around the foam pad, and there we go. Using my powers of guesstimation, I am guessing how thick the foam is and where the various levels of foam are going to have to sit to create a relatively flat area for the box to sit on. Great, so you got your two pieces now, stick them on. Later on off camera, I used the center piece that I had removed to cut an additional third layer towards the very outside edge, and you'll see that in later clips. Testing purposes only. I then proceeded to drive it around town for a little bit using just the strap. It didn't really work out so well. Just skip to this part where we actually affix it to the box. Right then, so go down to Lowe's or whatever local hardware store you have and get 1024 three hole T nuts and some one inch 1024 bolts. Peel back your grip tape and grab a quarter inch. We're now using a quarter inch drill bit. How rude. Anyway, strap your box down, drill some holes in the deck. Using a quarter inch paddle bit, countersink a little area for the very top of your T-nut to fit into. Now it's perfectly flush. And you want to do that about five more times. You've now discovered a work of art and you're just going to cover it up with grip tape anyway. Yay! I need to make these shorter so it'll fit inside because I want a nice clean look. Okay, so the SD card ran out of storage, but I got two of them now. I didn't like the way the ESC kept rattling around and falling out of the box when I was trying to install it, so I used some double-sided tape to adhere it down, and here I am sticking in the pass-through connections that are kind of waterproof, but there's also a bunch of holes in the box, so it doesn't really matter in the end. Why are they here? I don't know. There we go. Now the ESC doesn't fall out. And you just want to connect up your wires in any way you want, really, and wrap them in electrical tape, because I don't trust those cheap little bullet connectors. All right, this is why I shorten the wires. There's hardly any space in there to begin with. But, looks like it'll all fit. ESC doesn't vibrate around. Put the battery in, put the enclosure on, and I think we're done. Now when I peeled back my grip tape, I used wax paper to keep it from sticking to itself, thinking that wax paper didn't stick to grip tape. Um, it actually does stick to grip tape pretty well, actually. Maybe you should use something else. Tin foil? I don't know. Anyway, put your grip tape back on. Thanks to that extra work we did countersinking those T-nuts, we now have a perfectly smooth and unnoticeable grip tape job that your feet will never feel. And there we go, all taped up, all screwed on, it's pretty sturdy, pretty sweet. And just like that, you're done building. Stay tuned for part two where I do a proper review of the board itself, do speed tests, range tests, and general, I don't know, is it good? Is it poop? I don't know. It's pretty fun though. Spoiler alert. See you in the next one.